All right, folks, uh, with the Fed removing the punch bowl, investors are saying it's the end of easy money. But my next guest says that was always a fallacy. I'm going to bring in Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. And David, you know, you say financial repression did not make it make for easy money, uh, uh, money with respect to money management, a period rather. What did it do then, all of that easy money? Well, the main thing that financial repression and easy money did post-crisis, once we were kind of through the the worst parts of the great financial crisis, is it boosted asset prices. It boosted valuations. Look, earnings definitely came up, Charles, in the 10 years after the financial crisis. But valuations came up a lot more than earnings. And so over time, it ended up becoming distortive. And then you had the COVID moment. And they treated it with a lot of emergency measures. They were in emboldened by the fact that they felt like it went well after the financial crisis. And at that point, it got ridiculous in how much liquidity they put out there and what it did into the housing market, putting mortgage rates down around 2%. Um, And so a lot of people bought houses at really silly prices. And that was because the Fed distorted prices. That's what happened with financial repression. And now that's sort of being corrected in many areas, including the market. I know last year, a lot of folks they were hiding out in value, right? They, they gave up on growth, but many said it was just a temporary uh, pit stop. Uh, but I think you, reading your notes, you get a sense that, no, this is just beginning. And I just, uh, I just put up a three-month chart, David, uh, so folks can see. Value in the last three months up 14.4%, growth up 1.3%, not counting today's session. You think this is just beginning. Stay in this trade, right? Yeah, because I don't really think it's a trade, Charles. I think that uh, throughout history, these are kind of decade-long trends. Growth and value tend to go back and forth, not usually for three months at a time, but often for multiple years. And that's really what you saw. Value in the last decade, from dot-com to the financial crisis, where growth had been really beaten up, you know, value did much better. In the last decade, where we were uh, up every year and where uh, the Fed had rates not only low, but always going lower. You you had um, really a quite a wonderful period for growth. I think that value is still very cheap relative to historical levels, and growth is still quite expensive relative. And then their relationship to one another is is very distorted. I love what your prior guest said, and he, he actually was really kind of saying a lot of things I would agree with, Charles. Um, you want to be in high quality right now. There's too mm-hmm. much instability, whether it's geopolitical, monetary, economic, there's things that are unstable, but there's great investment opportunity, and you hedge that risk with cash flow, with dividends, with value. Let me ask you one more thing before I let you go, David. Uh, this China reopening story, you think it's being downplayed too much. How do we benefit from it? How do investors make money from it? Well, the lowest hanging fruit, I suspect, is energy. The belief that all of a sudden we can stay in a 70 to $80 range of oil may prove to be far too optimistic. It may be more wishful thinking from the Department of Energy and the Biden administration. I think it's entirely possible that as they fill up strategic petroleum reserve and China's reopening adds another million to million and a half barrels a day to the global uh, need, I think you could very well end up seeing higher oil prices again. So on one hand, the deep recession concerns globally China reopening might mitigate some of that, Mm -hmm. but domestically it could put pressure on the consumer who might face higher oil prices. For investors, though, to me, I would just say uh, look at emerging markets for your growth. Mm -hmm. Look at energy still on the dividend side. Great stuff. Always appreciate it. Happy New Year, David. Appreciate you. Thanks, Charles. All right.